The High Noon Hot Seat is brought to you by High Noon Podcast. Check us out at highnoonpodcast.com. Drop the beat! And welcome to the High Noon Hot Seat, brought to you by High Noon Podcast. I'm your host, The Blevins. With me, as always, is Death Blow. What's up, Death? Not too much. What's going on, bud? Not too much. And joining us today is the video game attorney himself, Ryan Morrison. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you for coming on, man. Really appreciate yeah. it. Really, really appreciate pleasure. it. I've seen Entourage, and I assume your life is exactly like Ari Gold's was, so I really appreciate you taking the time out to, to hang out with us and talk it's about It's basically a documentary, exactly. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, as uh, you guys may or may not know, I mean, if you don't know what an attorney is, I don't know. <laughs> um, this is going to be a little bit of a different type of interview, obviously. Uh, although, I don't know, Ryan, can you say, are you playing for any Overwatch League teams? Have you, can you say whether or not you're playing? <laughs> This, the signing deadline's not over yet. I'm still holding out that I'm going to get an offer, but none quite yet. Okay. Holding so out for contenders. For all, <laughs> for all intents and purposes, it's not going to be a player interview. This is going to be from the player representation and uh, the legal and, and all that fun side. Um, so just keep that in mind. I think I'm super interested in this. Um, as you guys know, death is kind of our resident expert in terms of gameplay and whatnot. I'm terrible, uh, <laughs> but I love the business side. I love all of the, the outside stuff. So I'm super pumped about this and we're super happy to have you on Ryan. Um, so we'll still start this out. Like we always do. We always like to get to know, uh, you a little bit better. So what, what is your, your video game origin story? What got you into gaming? Sure. So I've been gaming most of my life. Uh, I started with uh, PlayStation when I was too old to have a PlayStation. I think PlayStation <laughs> 2 had just come out, but you know I grew up without the uh, the means to get them earlier. And then uh, Final Fantasy VII really just showed me what a game could be better than movies, books, anything else. And uh, I unfortunately got EverQuest one day, and it just <laughs> ruined my life. And here we are. <laughs> Yeah, that we've we've all gone down similar paths. I know. <laughs> yeah. that, that's a little a little upset you didn't say World of Warcraft, but yeah, yeah. Well, that's, I mean, we'll let it go. Well, well, to be honest, I mean, EverQuest led to Dark Age of Camelot, led to World of Warcraft. I played since vanilla, and I See, certainly, yeah, I was a guild leader for a while, which I can't believe I made it to law school with that kind of resume. Steve <laughs> <laughs> uh, Blevins, you're still the only one that's ever been on the show that hasn't played World of Warcraft. Hey, I have right. played still, it. It's still just you. I have played it. I just, I literally, I like, this isn't even a joke. I literally fell asleep while I was playing it. Um, <laughs> if you didn't do that at least 500 times while playing it, like you weren't <laughs> hardcore enough. That's there's, exactly there's right. There's two ways falling asleep yeah. while playing WoW goes. Like no, you're in our... Uh, you know, 15 of uh, Alter Rock Valley when that first came out and you just can't keep your eyes open anymore. That's that's why I fell asleep there. Yeah. I'm not going to go into my whole anti-RPG rant right now because we have bigger and better things to talk about. Um, <laughs> so want to talk a little bit about uh, your law background. Um, and when you were in law school, were, were you like planning on being in video games and gaming or did you have another idea? Like how did, how did that all start? No, as far as I was aware, video game law wasn't a thing or a viable option. It's not that I didn't know they were video game companies with lawyers, but mm -hmm. I didn't expect to uh, be general counsel of a company or anything like that right out of law school. Uh, so instead, I went for criminal law, actually. I wanted to be a defense attorney and help people get out who were wrongfully accused and all that fun stuff. Uh, but I went to school to do basically legal aid and pro bono work. Uh, halfway through school, I wound up being roommates with someone who uh, was a chef in a restaurant and the owner of the restaurant was brothers with a politician that I really liked at the time. And I got a job in his office and I thought it was gonna change my life. And that politician, mm. unfortunately, was Anthony Weiner. And then he showed his, uh, <laughs> can I say dick on this show? He sure. showed well, that it's to too the late now. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, next thing you know, we are uh, backup planning it. And there was a professor <laughs> named Gregory Boyd at my law school who introduced me to video game law. He, he works at Frankfurt Kern, a big law firm in New York. 
And I got a job with Large Animal Games, which was uh, social casual games. Uh, I did some light legal work for them. They didn't have a lawyer in-house, so I was kind of teaching myself at, while I was still in law school. Uh, and I was more doing marketing for them, but I learned the law as I was there, taught myself trademarks. And then when I graduated, uh, basically what happened was Candy Crush started uh, trademarking Candy and Saga and going after a bunch of game studios. And Reddit was going crazy about it. And I was sitting there all angry saying someone should help those small indie studios. And I realized I could. Uh, I was a lawyer for about eight days. I messaged everybody <laughs> and I said, look, I, you know, I'm not going to pretend I've been doing this for 30 years, but I'll do it for free if you want to fight them. And they said yes. And we did. The IGDA grouped up with me and uh, Reddit started calling me video game attorney. And we just kind of ran with it. And here we are. So you literally got the like the sword named from the king of Reddit, like you <laughs> <laughs> bestowed. I, I down mean, from... <laughs> yeah, because I would have never called myself that originally because I would have felt like a huge jerk. I still do all the time because it's not like I'm the only <laughs> attorney who does video game law. But uh, it's fine. I, and nowadays I'm more video game agent anyway because mm -hmm. uh, you know with Overwatch League we represent over seventy five percent of the players in the Overwatch League. And that's in an agency capacity. We certainly help them with the law firm, but the law firm and agency are two separate entities. So mm -hmm. I'm more, you know, I'm CEO of the agency right now. I still obviously am involved with the law firm, but my uh, partner, Michael Lee, does a lot more with the law firm and I do a lot more with the agency. Just that's how it is right now. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, and obviously the kind of the agency part is, is what we're... Uh, on High Noon Podcast, uh, the most excited about. So, I, sure, I, I, we're not we're not sure what you can and can't say, but are there any notable clients that you have for Overwatch League? I know we uh, Sleepy said that he's uh, working with you. Are there any, yes. any other top names that you can uh, throw out there? I mean, it's it's the most pompous thing I can say, but it's almost the other way around. You know, name a top name, and we probably rep them. We rep Seagull, Bird Ring, IDDQD, Sinatra. Uh, I don't want to not name someone because we grew up a lot of really talented people. You said 75%. There's only so much time. You can't. Right. Yeah, right. Really, but. But, but I mean, everyone we work with from the, you know, the guys on minimum salaries proving themselves up to Siegel, you know, there's, they all have different dreams and hopes and wants. And it's, mm -hmm. it's really cool to be able to get to know them all and, and uh, help them get where they want to be. That's awesome. Now, are you working mostly with Overwatch players in Overwatch League, or are there players in other games or other esports that you're working with? Oh, yeah. I mean, we've been doing this for three years So uh, at the agency side. So mm -hmm. we, we do a ton of work in League of Legends, in Dota, in Counter-Strike, uh, everything, Hearthstone, down, uh, PUBG. Mm -hmm. we're, we're working with a lot of the top rosters in PUBG right now. Uh, and it's not me, obviously. You know, I, mm -hmm. I, Overwatch is certainly my game in my world right now. Uh, but we have Barry Lee, who does a ton of work in League of Legends. We have Jason Greenglass, who is basically my right-hand man with everything else. So if I'm not the point of contact for a player, it's usually him. And then we just brought in uh, 10 more agents and managers just to help make sure everybody is has a point of contact and, and knows that they have someone at 24-7, because that's important here. You know, one of the major criticisms we got up front was we had too many clients. And I understand that. But to be perfectly honest about it, we don't really have a lot of competition that does what we do, mm -hmm. uh, at least not in a way that I'm comfortable recommending people to. Mm -hmm. So instead of saying, sorry, we can't help you, I don't want to leave anybody out to dry like that, uh, we that we would rather bring in more staff and, and grow with them. Uh, a lot of our players, we don't even charge. A lot of our players, we, we, we at least for the first three years, we did pro bono. Mm -hmm. uh, every one of our Overwatch League players, we we obviously you know take a cut from because we have to keep the lights on and it's it's been overwhelming. Uh, but there's been no player, at least that I'm aware of, where we haven't paid for ourselves. We always negotiate higher salaries and better benefits and everything else. Uh, that's what an agent does. You know, mm -hmm. any player who, who signs a contract without reading it or takes the first offer they're given, they're doing themselves a huge disservice and they won't be around in five years. You know, you have to take this seriously and, and those players aren't. Yeah, I mean... I definitely, just from a personal standpoint, I would much rather have everyone have an agent, even if it's the same agent or same agency, than <laughs> have people go in there blind. Like, that's absolutely, like, I can't even imagine going into one of those negotiations with, you know, the Boston uprising and <laughs> right. without, without anyone there, you know, an 18 year old kid or potentially even younger going in there and being like, yeah, so uh, what's my salary again? Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. We, uh, it, it's sad because you see it all the time. And I've had players tell me it's rude to bring in an attorney. I've had players tell me, uh, you know, they, they, they're the captain of the team signs something so that they want to just sign it to you. They don't want to cause any waves. And it's, it's infuriating because that's not how it should be. We've also had owners 
uh, in Overwatch, not in the Overwatch League, but owners in Overwatch that owned other teams telling their players, don't get an attorney, don't get a lawyer, uh, sign this, don't tell anyone this is happening. Uh, just for anyone listening and any players out there, you can always talk to an attorney. Even if you yeah. sign an NDA, you're allowed to talk to an attorney. That's why attorney-client privilege exists. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so don't let anyone scare you out of that stuff. It's, it happens way more than you would think. Yeah, I remember reading all sorts of horror stories, even just like, you know, within the last year and, and, and even earlier, just the horror stories of players just getting completely destroyed by, you know, slimy uh, business practices. But yeah, it's it's uh, it's very constant in esports and hopefully stuff like the Overwatch League stops that where we see mm -hmm. a lot more uh, oversight regulation in a good and positive way, not in a smoke and mirrors way that other mm -hmm publishers and or and orgs have done in the past yeah well that gives me a perfect segue so i'm just going to jump in <laughs> with the next question here uh speaking of smoke and mirrors uh we've only we only know the salary for one player we so don't far, even necessarily Sinatra. know yeah it. yeah, yeah we're just told the right speculation um but uh, you know ballparking 150,000 is what we were told i believe when the when the story broke uh can you tell us why we don't know all of them like i know i can go find out what every single player on the buffalo bills makes sure uh, uh, so can you help me understand why we don't know that for overwatch yet couple of reasons uh first and foremost it, it doesn't exist in esports so there is no esport where you can go see what everybody's paid mm -hmm. uh and the other thing the reason you can in the nfl and the reason you can elsewhere is largely in part due to the unions uh where they these players are protected uh those everything is publicly reported for the player's safety and so the players can know their value and know where they should fit in the the ecosystem uh i can't tell you whether or not that's sinatra salary i can say you know we are the ones that negotiated sinatra salary i know what it is and I can say that there are players, uh, you know, one team to the to another team could be worlds apart right now, mm -hmm. and nobody will know. Uh, is that something that could happen in the future? Perhaps. But, uh, you know, I'm certainly for reporting salaries. I think that helps everybody. Certainly makes my job easier when I can go say, look what this guy's getting paid, mm -hmm. now match it. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you know this, this player is intrinsically and statistically better than this player. This player is making more money. Pay him or he's gone works better than what I have to do now, where I mm -hmm. have to, in every negotiation, pretend I don't know any other player's salary mm -hmm. except for the players on that one team. You, you know, so I attorney-client privilege exists. It's not like, so a, a lot of people are mistaken too, and they think because the, the misfits and the, the or uh, sorry, the, the, the Miami team and the San Francisco team mm -hmm. have signed NDAs that they know each other's salaries. That's not true. What they do know is their own player salaries, and they they'll, they'll know who's on the other roster before you guys, obviously, but not the salaries. And uh, that's that's important to to understand because I have to keep all that secret. You know, we, without a doubt, besides Nate Nanzer, know more about the Overwatch player ecosystem than anyone in the world. And it's a uh, it's a hard thing to keep and not use to our advantage. But we would never do that. We would lose our license, basically. Mm -hmm. Well, and I do have a couple follow-ups to that. You know, is is the reason it's hidden? Is that kind of like Blizzard d driven, or is that the teams kind of driving that? Yeah, I, I would. You know, it's it's almost kind of mutual. It's it, they both. It doesn't really help anyone on that side of the fence to mm -hmm. share salaries right now. Uh, they, you know, Blizzard knows what the salaries are. Blizzard is very aware of where they can go and where they can't go. Uh, the minimum is public which is great to see. I mean, that's a huge step for esports in general as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but but yeah, I mean, it would be beneficial to the players to have their salaries public for the most part. But the, uh, you know, we don't have a union in esports anymore. We don't have a players association. We don't have anything close to resembling that. And uh, I think we're, we're still years away from anything that's good in that, that mm -hmm. side of the industry. Uh, unfortunately, what we have right now is uh, a player base who, for the most part, doesn't have lawyers read their contracts and doesn't uh, have an agent or anything like that. That And that's outside of Overwatch. In Overwatch, I would say about 90% of the players have representation. Outside of Overwatch, it's only about 20%. And that's, uh, until that changes, you know, we're not going to see a, a big movement in esports. And if we do, I would imagine it's an Overwatch first just because of that exact statistic. Mm -hmm. What can we do as fans to help them reach the correct conclusion <laughs> of publishing these salaries so that we can use them? Like, cause I, I use them in the contracts to get negotiated and all those things to measure how my team's being run, you know, things like that. So I want that information as a, a future fan of the league. So how can we help them get there? 
Yeah, I think it's something that's that's there. There are I know that's an important thing for sure, but there's so many other things that I want to see happen first, where it's uh, you know just just mental sanity for these guys, mm -hmm. mental health coaches. They're practicing so many ridiculous hours in other games, and then they go and stream right after, and then they have to go to the gym, and they're not allowed visitors. They they're brought food at their desks, and then they have to go to sleep and repeat. Uh, that's why we see careers for superstars in other games last only two or three years. Uh, I'm really impressed with what Blizzard's done on the back end to help combat that. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad to see those moves first before we get to the, the public salary and everything like that. But it's coming. I mean, the, we've already proven in this preseason that the players uh, are very chatty. And it's funny, <laughs> they have a, a document circulating amongst themselves, the players do, of what everybody's making so they can compare salaries themselves. And I would say... 99% of the salaries on that sheet of paper are lies. You know, the players are posturing <laughs> or they're trying to act like they get more or it's it's so funny. Uh, but it's, and then, you know, that's what gets reported eventually. But it's, it's. Uh, I am shocked we haven't seen more reports on salaries. I saw a slingshot today report the average salary is 80 to 120. But, you know, I, I wouldn't exactly brag about a 40K swing in your average salary guess. I mean... You could have wrote that article a month ago with no information and, and been around <laughs> accurate, but right. it's uh, you know it, it's 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 always important to just keep that in mind where, when you guys read these things and see this yeah. stuff. It's 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 so hard. I, it's my favorite pastime now. I go on Reddit every single day to watch the roster speculation, to watch the <laughs> uh, you know who's where. I've known where everybody signed for almost two months now, and it's it it's so great seeing the the internet sluice about uh, everything where everything's going. And there's some great ones on there. Uh, there's also some ones that are just hilarious, uh, but you know it's Michael's captain of every team. Basically, that's the only one Reddit's right about. And uh, <laughs> other than that, we're uh, you know we're everything's going to come out when it comes out, and that's basically it. Yeah. But it's 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 funny watching all the guessing. So you did you see our story that we broke of uh, a random picture that we got sent of Numlock sitting? With, I almost with just said, used that as reference. <laughs> Uh, and I can yeah, neither they... confirm nor deny whether they've had lunch. Yeah. Oh man, L lunch. That... Yeah, they just chose the wrong table to sit at with like our yeah, four right. defunct third host. Yeah. Uh, but it, it sounds like in in general to kind of put a cap on that conversation. The thing we can do to get, help get there is just continue to support the players in every way we can mm -hmm. when when talks of a, a CBA or a, a collect or yeah collective bargaining agreement or a players union come up support them like actively as a community voice support for things like that because that's that's what'll help get there absolutely and just remember who's the good guy in these situations uh, and what I mean by that and I don't mean this about any overwatch league owners in particular but I do mean the owners are businessmen they mm -hmm. have superpowers when it comes to uh, manipulation and charisma and getting people to believe something. And players, for the most part, have limited social skills if you want to get stereotypical about it. Obviously not all of them, but most are, are less likely to speak out. Uh, they don't understand these complicated legal matters. They don't know how to talk to a Reddit audience. And it, it drives me insane when I see players getting shit on on Reddit and elsewhere when the owner comes in and explains that he's the good guy because the owner is always going to win that conversation politically mm -hmm. and charismatically. But I really urge the community to take a step back and look at the situation just realistically. Is, is what this owner is saying probable? Is it likely? If not, then let's look for more information. Let's wait for the other side to be told. And, and it probably won't ever be told because there's usually very strong NDAs attached mm -hmm. to uh, what that player knows or what that player went through. And again, that's not even about Overwatch League. That's esports in general. I see it happen so much. Uh, you know, I've, I've not made it secret that I don't like H2K. I think I think a lot of bad things about H2K. And, uh, you know, I'm still not able to say why. And my player who was, was treated poorly, in my opinion, is still not able to say why. And it's because of NDAs, and I don't want to risk a lawsuit for him. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't, I don't mind saying the disparaging comment that I don't like H2, H2K, but I have to get careful about confidentiality agreements, and I have to get careful about uh, def de uh, defamation if I were to say anything that I can't prove is true. And if I can't prove it because I have an NDA attached, it becomes a cycle of shittiness. And, uh, you know, that's the reality here. So just I, I just I always like to say that to the community. Really understand why you're upset and what's going on and who's talking <laughs> and uh, 
to kind of piggyback off that just a little bit too. It's not even so much like who's the good guy and who's the bad guy. It's it's just like where are their loyalties? Because the owners have right. an obligation. It's not even like a, a desire or want. They have an obligation to investors and to the, like, the board members and things like that, depending on the structure of the organization, to do what's best for the organization. And it's not always to do what's best for the players. It's great when they both work out, and, you know, but it, it's not always the case. Um, and you know, the the players are the ones who's are, are like actually financially in trouble if something goes wrong. Right, like that's the there, way I see it. So there's something called a fiduciary duty, which is uh, means you have a duty of loyalty to the company to do everything. Everything you do has to be in the company's best interest, mm -hmm. and you have to remember that when an owner comes and makes a post that they have a legal obligation to defend the company, not to be honest with you, and they never mm -hmm. will be if it's against their <laughs> fiduciary duty. Yeah. Uh, but again, for the most part, the, the the old story of the evil owner is for the most part gone. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think in large part because we have people like Nate Nanzer now who are going to slap them with a sledgehammer if they do something wrong. Yeah. Uh, you know, not to, to suck up to Nate, but I mean, something like that is important. Uh, when on the flip side, you see Valve, who, who would never intervene unless you, you know, I don't know how you would get Valve to intervene, uh, but it's you know it's it's a matter of where we're on our own a lot. It's it's me and Reddit's PR against an organization mm -hmm. if something goes wrong in Dota or Counter Strike, and uh, you know it's it, here we have an actual means to an end when something goes wrong. I, I just have to say the visualization of Nate Nanzer like dressing up in full Reinhardt armor with a literal band hammer like go, showing up to the door of one of these orgs was just we need someone. That's to how he walked around. I don't know if you've seen him in person. He's always wearing that. He's, he's just constantly in right. He's he's IRL. He's a business right. suit. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, moving us moving us along here a little bit. Uh, can you tell us some popular factors and things that the uh, you know you don't have to be specific about any of your clients, but you know things that have come up multiple times that they have said is important to them about where they want to go. You know, is it probably more so the players that have had multiple offers and options. But oh, about what what org they want to play for. Well, what pri you know? What are they prioritizing when they're picking their teams? Is it all about money, or is it about you know the guys on the team or, or the management? And I know it's a crappy answer, but it depends. Uh, I have yeah. players who who say to me, "I don't care if I make the minimum. I want to be on the best roster. I want to win." Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I I have players who say, "Get me that paycheck. I don't care if I'm on the worst team in the world. I want to buy a boat." And uh, <laughs> you know, both. <laughs> I prefer to work with the first one, even though I got a, a bigger chunk of the second one. I like to work with people who are passionate about this and grow with them. And uh, and then there's a third tier who are are understandably and only want to be streamers and personalities. But uh, Overwatch League is a, a you know means to remain relevant or things like that. Mm -hmm. That's super rare, but it exists. But uh, you know, Siegel, for example, basically said, "I don't care where where what the money is. I don't care if people don't like my choice. I want to go win. I want to prove that I'm one of the best players in this league, and and uh, I don't want to sit on a bench. I want to prove that I'm going to be on a roster where I can win and kick ass and hoist a trophy. And uh, I think he's in the perfect opportunity to do that. Yeah, and mission I, successful I, with yeah, this yeah, for sure. <laughs> And, you know, he won the first tournament he played with them, and he played, and he played well. Yeah. And I'm excited to see uh, the rest of his career and the rest of that team. Uh, we rep that whole roster, so those are, are some of my favorite guys, and uh, I'm very excited to see where they go. Yeah, I think we all are. Also, side note, how many players literally said, I want to buy a boat? <laughs> One in particular, and I, 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 I won't pitch confidentiality on that, but he literally said, uh, I want to put a boat in my boat at the t by the time I'm done with Overwatch League. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> um, now, when they made the announcement and gave us kind of that first wave of information about what the contracts would look like, you know, that there would be like health insurance, all that stuff, they did tell us that there's allowed to be incentives in these contracts. Uh, can you tell us, are there a lot of incentives in the contracts that you've negotiated? And can you maybe give us some examples of what those might look like? Sure. And it's my job to negotiate that stuff. That's why I, I don't know if any player who doesn't have an agent has an incentive in their contract because it's something they're not used to asking for. They don't know what to ask for. They have no frame of reference. Uh, but what we what we negotiate always is is performance bonuses, meaning how well you do either personally or as a team, you'll get a bonus. Mm -hmm. uh, we have incentives based on streaming numbers. There's a plethora of different ways to do it, and it depends on who it is. But, you know, that's our job to navigate it. And it's been really cool because these owners for the first time in my experience in esports, uh, truly are looking for mutually beneficial, happy player relationships oh. that they want long-term and and they're willing to kind of 
uh, you know, without telling you what's in those contracts, they're willing to mold a contract around that personality. And whether that is a person who streams or a person who just wants to win or a person who just wants to help his teammates and coach and be kind of a sub, but really an analyst, uh, you know, there's a lot of that built in there. And, and there's incentives for anyone who wants to, to work it out because that's what incentives are. It's you, you help me, I'll help you. And uh, we've seen some really cool and interesting ones that I don't know if they'll ever be out there, but uh, you know, it's, I, I don't, I don't think it hurts anybody by sharing them, but I, I can't share them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, are, can you tell me though, are any of them stat based? Like, is there one out there in the number, the numbers are whatever, but if you get 1000 kills in season one, we'll give you 10 <laughs> grand. Uh, so in the NFL, we see that all over, you know, mm -hmm. if you hit yeah. a certain rushing percentage and, and uh, to be perfectly honest with you, it, not in any ones I've negotiated to be specific. Uh, they're a little more general in, in how we operate, but that's not to say they don't exist. I don't know. I haven't seen every contract. But uh, it's not a goal for us. And uh, again, I can't get into what's in the contracts, but I can say yeah. that we try to keep things more general because you don't know how the rosters are going to flesh out. You don't know who's going to be starting more than others. Uh, you don't know whose wrist is going to break game two. Uh, so, and, and that's another thing that we have not seen before. These these salaries are for the most part, uh, you know, guaranteed, even if they get an injury or anything like that. You know, that's really cool to see that that these guys are being taken care of the right way. Yeah, yeah I, sure. I really am hoping, fingers crossed, that there's a like. If I get, if we make it to the championship, I just get the boat. I'm I'm going in. Yeah, right. I'm, <laughs> the boat clause must exist. I believe. I believe. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Boats for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, shifting the the conversation a little bit, um, I was kind of curious how like outside of the org, but how like sponsorships factor into either salary negotiations or like in your role with the players, like, is that a joint con Like, I have no idea how any of it works. Like, I don't know how it works in the NFL or any, any sports, like, but how do, how does like, you know, a G fuel or a razor or a DX racer sponsorship factor into this whole mix? So let's use League of Legends just because it's a little more out there and mm -hmm. it, it is what it is. But basically, League of Legends, the LCS has its own sponsors. Uh, the orgs then can get their own sponsors as long as they don't conflict with LCS sponsors. Mm -hmm. And it used to be the player couldn't get sponsors. Uh, I'm not going to toot my own horn to the umph degree, but you know we are the first player-only representation, both law firm and agency, that I'm aware of. And for two years, we've been begging, pleading, and pushing, and fighting, and warring to get independent sponsorships for players. Mm -hmm. And we've gotten them now. They're in most contracts now. Mm -hmm. And the way that works is uh, now the LCS has its own sponsors. The orgs have sponsors that don't conflict with that. And the player can get sponsors that don't conflict with either one of those two. Mm -hmm. Now, you would be right in saying that doesn't leave much for the player. But we're starting to see... Uh, the Jordan, the Michael Jordan-esque players be able to get even conflicting sponsors. Mm. Uh, you'll notice Michael Jordan would show up to the arena in Nike gear, but then change into Adidas gear to play on the floor. We're going to start seeing things like that where, you know, a player is going to be using a, a HyperX headset on his stream and a Razer headset on, in competition or whoever winds up, mm -hmm. uh, you know, sponsoring these people. I swear, Reddit, that's not a leak. I truly don't know who Overwatch <laughs> these sponsors are. Uh, <laughs> and uh, watch it be Razer and I get sued. No, I really don't know. But, it's, uh, <laughs> but in all seriousness, I mean, that's what we're going to see more and more of. Uh, and we've been fighting hard for it. That, that's something we've really pushed back on because uh, these players can make you know, 10 times their salary in independent sponsorships. So it's it's important that we have that door open for them. Yeah, I know the one thing that was, the, when I was just doing a little bit of research beforehand was like LeBron's air quote salary is 32 million, but he makes 55 million uh, like in, in, in sponsorships and endorsements. So it's like, yeah, okay, let the, like he doesn't even need to play. Like he could just do the endorsements right. and, and and get exactly. That. I mean, it's there's. I mean, that's true of some players that are very obvious in Overwatch League. One I mentioned earlier, they don't need to be in the Overwatch League. They can print money on their stream and sponsorships and everywhere else, but mm -hmm. they want to win, and that's cool. I think that's awesome to see. Yeah, yeah, it, absolutely. Um, uh, are there uh, signing bonuses as any part of the contracts you've seen so far? And if so, like what are the, the ballpark uh, percentages um, of the contracts that include one? Well, that's why uh, Sinatra's report was so strange because it said 150, but he got a $2 million signing bonus. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Leaks! Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I can't, I can't get into specifics like mm -hmm. that, but, you know, signing bonuses are part of sports and, and uh, they're always going to exist and, uh, you know, this is no different, I'm sure. 
you know, but that's that's the, the numbers and what they look like that we can't really get into. Right. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, so uh, again, kind of shifting a little bit further because this is uh, this is something that we're curious about just so that we know when and when we can't when we can and cannot ask players questions on the show uh, at what point during the the process with the orgs or with blizzard even do players sign their ndas and when are they released from them and able to ask or answer questions about that process so it's honestly pretty different per player and i i actually don't have a good answer for you because a lot of them signed it before i even started representing them mm -hmm. and uh so you know it's been it's been around and it's it's important. I mean everyone involved with Overwatch League in any capacity, uh, besides us basically, have signed an NDA because uh, that's where that's how you get involved. You have to play ball. You have to and listen. I haven't signed an NDA, but I keep everything privileged because I don't want Blizzard hating me. I don't want to be outcast from the league that we're working on. Yeah. Uh, you know it's it's a uh, it's a sign of respect, maturity, and professionalism to just not leak stuff, and uh, it's it's something that. I, we certainly tell all of our players not to do, even after uh, their NDA might lapse. If it's something that shouldn't be talked about, don't mm -hmm. talk about it. You know, save uh, save your own career and save your own skin. Uh, the people who leak things are usually going to be the the raging people who uh, <laughs> didn't get the offer they want, and you'll hear lots from them. But you have to also keep in mind that they were never on the team. They were never in the inner circle, mm -hmm. and a lot of what they yell about on, on Twitter or Reddit just isn't right. You know, uh, for example, tryout fees. That was the number one story forever on or for, for a week mm -hmm. uh, because of idiots Reddit like Thorin. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, not to call Thorin an idiot. You know, he's much worse than that. But it's uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's and I'm kidding. And listen, I mean, he was he was a respected journalist if you want to call him that for a long time. But he uh, he certainly doesn't fact check stuff in Overwatch. This is the second time now I've caught him regurgitating a rumor from an angry player that was categorically untrue. And even if it had turned out that one tier six org somewhere asked for a tryout fee, it was never paid. It never happened. It was never reality. And that's also not what he was reporting on. I know who talked to him about it. I know it was not true. Uh, but it's it's just you have to, again, watch who you're listening to. Watch who you're hearing these stories from. And I think you'll be a lot more uh, able to breathe easy and enjoy the league and enjoy life. Uh, you know, the, the angry stories that come out are angry stories from angry people usually, and you have to fact check them. So wait, you're trying to tell me that a bunch of 18 year old kids aren't telling the, the truth on the internet? <laughs> yeah, people would go on the internet and lie, no way. But yeah, I mean, that, that's the truth of it. And uh, it, it sucks when they when people like that go after players I represent who I, you know, I, I wanna go into mama bear mode and go kill them, but you know, it's it, what I know is privilege, so I'm not allowed to go argue with them other than to say, that is not true or or with if it's thorn in particular you know i usually get a little angrier than that but it's uh you know and, and then i don't do myself a service with that because then people say oh he just hates thorn so you can't we can't trust him either but uh, you know it is what it is one of us knows what's happening and one of us doesn't and it's uh you know take that for what you will <laughs> <laughs> well Moving along here, uh, can, you know, we're talking about the NDAs a lot. Can you tell us what kind of teeth those NDAs have? What would happen if a player were to go out there and say, I signed with this team, I'm so excited, this is what I'm making, like, and just spilled all the beans, what would happen to them? <laughs> well, so if that was the case, they would not be on that team anymore, and they would not be making that at all. Right. Uh, if, if, uh, but it generally, the oldest trick and the oldest truth in law is that NDAs are never enforced. Uh, if you break an NDA, I'm never going to sue you. What an NDA is there for is basically uh, an agreement on what you're about to see is confidential. And if you leak it, you are done with us. You're never going to be part of the crew again. You're never going to be in the circle again. Mm -hmm. And you're banished. And it's it's uh, I'm not worried about my player breaching an NDA and getting sued at all. I'm worried about my player breaching an NDA and never playing Overwatch again or professional esports again. Because uh, if you break an NDA here, you're not going to go become uh, a CSGO player or a PUBG player. No one's going to want you. So that they the teeth of those are the uh, blacklist from the industry, not necessarily the contract itself. Gotcha. Now, to be said, you can be sued over an NDA. Disclaimer, right. disclaimer, disclaimer. Right. <laughs> no, the, none but of this is legal. None of this is legal advice. I'm like, so <laughs> I get, so I get one. <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> the way to cash that bad boy in. <laughs> Uh, and we got a question here that the Blevins found on LinkedIn. Um, 
you know, a similar, a similar style of question. Uh, you know, you're familiar with the Defran incident and what got him in trouble when he got himself banned from contenders and dropped off the selfless roster. If a player were to have a similar incident, okay, and do it pretty basically exactly what Defran did and get themselves in trouble while representing an organization, what would happen to them? Well, so uh, again, let's use LCS because Overwatch stuff isn't even finalized yet. Mm -hmm. uh, but so in esports in general, if you do something like that, the team will have a mechanism to fine you. The league will have a mechanism to fine you. And more importantly, both of those uh, groups can just ban you. They can terminate your contract and kick you out. Uh, every contract in the history of sports has some form of behavior clause, which uh, is going to be more general than I would like it as the player attorney. But what it basically says is if you're an asshole publicly, you get kicked off the team. That can be drunk in public to a certain extent. That can be getting in fights. That can be screaming on stream. That can be being a jerk to fans. It can be a lot of different stuff. And uh, you basically just have to act like a professional and, and a human being if you want to stay on these teams. Uh, if, if you can't do that, you know, that sucks. But you, you're probably not going to be long for this league. And I say that as someone who rages. I constantly catch myself <laughs> when I'm playing Overwatch freaking out and being a jerk to people. And I, I really, like, have to apologize and take a step back and, and say, you know, sorry, I didn't mean that. The point A wasn't that important. Uh, I, I'm glad you <laughs> six, six picked the DPS. Uh, you know, it's... it's uh, I thought we it, weren't going to talk it, about our games, Ryan. I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But, but I, I, I mean, I have friends who, like, won't play games with them anymore because I rage so bad. But that's, you know, I'm also not a pro player. I'm an angry lawyer and agent. So I can <laughs> rage in those worlds. My, I hope my players don't rage like I do on, on their streams and their games. That's how you just make pro, a second Pro account. tip, Ryan. Yeah, I was going to say, that's why I have three accounts. Because yeah, well, I, need, <laughs> I need one somewhere nobody knows exists. You just have the, the so Mayan Rorison account that no one knows. No yeah. one knows. <laughs> See, Who's the that? whole problem with me is Blizzard knows who I am, so I'm sure they have my IP address and they just track every text <laughs> I say, and I'm screwed one day. <laughs> All right, and we also have a question here from Thorn Rain. Not uh, to be one confused of our... with Thorin. Thorin, yeah. Completely yeah. different <laughs> person here. <laughs> Thorn Rain. Um, do you think that the players should or will, I mean, we kind of already talked about this a little bit, um, form a players' union after season one, and as a lawyer agent, how would you feel about a union in Overwatch League? I think we definitely got the second part of that. Done yeah, I mean, I, I've been saying for a long time that we're years off for an, a, a union in esports, but uh, Overwatch League has kind of proved me wrong. They... Uh, the amount I've always been saying that because players don't take their job seriously, they don't take their contract seriously, they don't take their taxes seriously, and that's step one. <laughs> but really, I mean, for the most part, I am blown away. I have players calling me every day asking for accountant recommendations or how to get a better bank account or how to do this, this, and that. This is the most mature player base I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. it, it is incomparable to the other esports. And uh, I think that Overwatch is ready for a union tomorrow. Uh, I, I also think that these are the players that are already thinking about it, already talking about mm -hmm. it. And and the beauty of it is I don't think Blizzard is against the idea. I don't think uh, that the teams are against the idea. I don't think it's going to be shoved down the players' throats the way it does by Riot. Uh, I think it's going to happen naturally, organically, and, and be, because of that, better. And uh, I'm very excited to see that happen. Will I... You know, so we, we rep more players than anyone. We are the, the number one player rep around. That doesn't mean we're going to lead the union or be involved with the union. Uh, that's a very different kind of law. It's a very different kind of uh, skill set, and it's a very different set of responsibilities. We would also probably be conflicted out of representing all our guys if we did that. So it'll happen. We're going to help as much as we can, but in no way am I going to start a union, which I know a lot of people ask us all the time. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like that's just more of a just people not understanding like how law works which is i'm 100 percent right. in the same boat because i'm like why don't you right. just do it man you're the, you're the yeah. game attorney you do it no but right <laughs> I, it's like it's like you're not a player so you probably do everything else outside of the game right you do that uh <laughs> exactly um so definitely i mean i think it'll definitely be interesting moving forward um <clears throat> so shifting focus a little bit we one of the things that death and i at least specifically us were extremely excited about. It. I think a lot of other people were uh, excited about as well was the like possibility or at least the thought or speculation of a draft happening for overwatch league. Like there would be in traditional sports. Uh, do, is there any, do you have any insight as to why that didn't happen or could it happen maybe potentially in the future? Like, yeah, I mean, it's the last question you just asked uh, a draft is illegal without a union for, uh, for most 
mostly illegal without a union. There's, I'm sure, some exceptions and workarounds. Mm -hmm. I am not a union attorney, like I said, but uh, that's not an Overwatch thing. That's an esports thing. The reason we don't see that is because without a a union, you can't have a draft, you can't have a salary cap. There's a lot of stuff you can't have without a union. I think you should start a union uh, like six months ago so that we can initially (laughs) draft these guys off the game. Well, I mean, that's why we're seeing a, a union being created without the players want for it in League of Legends. It's so they can have a salary cap and a draft. Uh, you know, that's just basic law. I'm not leaking anything there. That's just the law. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. Um, well, I, I, you know, I heard that. I don't remember where I heard it. it honestly, it may, it may have even been from you a while ago. I, I don't know. I heard that a <laughs> I while I say ago. lots of things. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I heard that a while ago, and then someone asked me about it, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure you can't do it without a players uh, association. And, uh, and maybe not even a players association, a union. A union, yeah. It's different. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, this is, I'm just showing how uh, much I don't No, it's, know, listen, but... <laughs> it's li- likewise. I don't, you know, it's not my area of law. I know pixels and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. So, um, I mean, I have infringing art on my wall. <laughs> I got that off Etsy, Soldier and McCree. Don't show this to Blizzard. <laughs> oh, it's okay. We can't. The, well, we didn't know what it was until you just said it. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like that you blocked off their heads. Um, I mean, I, I, that's just a lack of skill on my part. But no, so <laughs> moving forward, I know, you know, this is obviously uncharted territory uh, for esports and even really for regular, uh, for traditional sports where. This is really kind of the first time we've seen a league of this magnitude form, like in the modern age. Like it, no one, no one is alive that saw the beginning of basketball, um, right. or the NFL, or any of that. So, how, you know, in in your opinion, how are, is the league or the, I guess the even the esport in general going to ensure uh, parity and competitive fairness without a draft? Are there, are there other ways to do that, or do you think that it just has to get to that point at some at some point? So, I, I mean, just let's take a step back what, what you mean by that. So what, what does a draft do that this ecosystem didn't in terms of fairness? Well, the bottom team gets the first player, has the, you know what I mean, the crack at everybody that's coming out the next season. Well, so you to, mean for season two. Roster. You don't mean season one then? Yeah, no. Season, right, I mean, right, season right, one right. is a wash, right? Like, that. that's obviously too late. Well, let's say, but... But let's say it wasn't. Like, let's say there was a draft season one. Do you think we would see more fair rosters than we are right now? If until I see all the rosters, I can't say. But if the rumors about how bad Boston are gonna be, then I, <laughs> it, might be, it might be true that we we could have done better. And I think of like you know we were talking a little bit about it in Discord, and I think the way they'd have to do it for like the initial first season launch uh, would be like a snake style, like you would do for your fantasy league, where you know the first pick is the last pick in the second round, so that right. way you're not getting the the best talent out of every single round. Whereas you don't need that in subsequent drafts since you want them to have that advantage. And, who and that who would have been your first picks? Um, <laughs> man, it would have been close, but I don't know that I would have went with a DPS player. I'll say that. Like, I think I would have probably tried to lock down like chips, a gin or like just a really, really top tier flex support player. I mean, I'm, nice. pick- I, I'm a flex support player. So obviously yeah. super I'm, I'm picking Pluppy because I've been a plup uh, to Vic because I've been a Pluppy fanboy since closed beta. So I like, nice. I don't even care what, I don't even care if I'm the owner of the team or the coach or the guy selling hot dogs in the stands. Like I'm picking, I'm picking the Plupster for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, what, what I can say about the situation right now and why I'm not so worried about a draft is that, uh, Every team had an opportunity to sign these players. There was no, you know, they're on Envy, so they're stuck with Envy. Mm-hmm. It's, it's uh, everyone had an opportunity for discussions and to make their pitches and to go out and see what they could do. And if a roster is not good or an org didn't get players they want, that's from a direct correlation of that org not having the right fit for that player, not having the right salary offer, not having the right infrastructure, whatever it might be. Or in some cases, they just literally couldn't create what that player wanted because that player knew where they wanted to play. Uh, but, if you know, there were offers that we saw the same player. We got offered three times the amount of salary on another org. Why why on earth would that, bot- that other offer even be considered? Uh, I saw an offer where the salary went down season two. Why on earth would anyone agree to that? You know, it's it's a matter of uh, of bad offers and and poor roster planning. If any rosters are bad, now that said, I don't think any rosters are bad. I don't think there's any 
you know, uh, unwinnable roster out there. I really mm-hmm. don't. I think a lot of these are, are, I think, quite literally, I think every team was put together super well for, for uh, how everyone came in and when they came in and things like that. Uh, but there, the rumors that are constantly going around about this being a, a friendship fest or, uh, <laughs> you know, a high school click, that is so ridiculously stupid. Uh, it is it is absolutely a business. It's a huge investment from these teams. It is, uh, every org took this super seriously. They had tryouts upon tryouts upon tryouts. Uh, obviously, some orgs just kind of cut the farm and went elsewhere, but everyone is in this to win it. No one was like, oh, you're friends with that guy? We'll take him. Cool. That sounds fun. <laughs> you know, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. Uh, and yeah, did everyone who get it get in who should have? No. Uh, there's a there's a handful of people that I if I had a team, I definitely would, would have put on my roster that are not in the Overwatch League. On the flip side, there's players in that shouldn't be in because the people competing for their same role had us and the other guys didn't. And mm-hmm. I'm not kidding to you when I say there are nights when I am screaming at owners to give my guy a tryout. There are nights when I'm begging an owner to give my guy a tryout. There, We run the whole gamut of... of getting our guys in there and then we know that our guys bust their butt and and they're gonna prove it when they're in there or we wouldn't be working with them and uh you see people who were, didn't have a team beforehand or were on a team in a very limited capacity who are now superstars of this league already and it's because that we you know they had us where where it, it's not that they needed us to win a tryout it's that they needed us to get that tryout then once they have it they can blow the the owner's mind away with how good mm-hmm. they are and someone who might even be better doesn't have that same opportunity because they never got in there. They just never had the chance. And, you know, that's on them. That's on them for not taking this seriously or believing the, the orgs they're on that they had a spot when everyone was telling them, you don't have a spot. Or believing their org that they were helping shop them around when that org was definitely not helping shop them around. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there's, there's a handful of orgs out there that absolutely cost their players an Overwatch League spot, but it's on those players for sitting by and believing their owner. You know, that's, like I said earlier, the owner has a fiduciary duty to the company, not to the player. I don't care if you like them. There's, there's, there are owners out there who straight up knowingly lied to their players, and that's why they're going to miss Overwatch League. I don't even remember the question. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I, I've got a, a follow-up one that actually we had at a different point, but I'll ask you now because it kind of piggybacks off of this. Um, what is, I mean... I know you said you're taking on a lot of these players either for free or in other in other esports, maybe not for Overwatch League, but you're you're really trying to help the players out. What is your kind of barometer for taking a player on for the agency? Like, could I go up and be like, okay, I'm a I'm a uh, a low platinum level uh, ladder player. And I'm looking for an agent. Like, can I? Can, 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 will we take me on and try to get me an Overwatch League tryout. So three years ago, uh, if you came to me in any capacity, not that capacity perhaps, but <laughs> if, you, uh, if, you, if you came to me in basically any capacity, uh, you know, we would help you. We, we, I used to tell everyone, it's still basically true, esports is 80% of our time, but only 2% of our billables. Uh, that's because we're in this for the long run. It's mm-hmm. because we have a very successful law firm in game dev world and Twitch and YouTube we do a lot of work on. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, without that backing us, I don't know that I'd be able to keep the lights on or pay rent with the very little money we make in esports. But that's changing. I know the NFL salaries are coming. The the MLB salaries are coming. And we're here now. You know, we, we're not going anywhere. The, the big agencies, the CAs, the WMEs of the world, they can't come in and just outspend us to steal our clients. It's not how this works anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other agencies that are competing with us on our level coming from this industry, they're not doing things the right way with the players. And we constantly get players come to us and say, man, I hated it there. I'm glad to be back. And it's because we really, truly, genuinely care about these guys. We're not in it to make a quick buck. And uh, we only hire people that feel the same. Jason Greenglass is someone that was a coach at RMU for their collegiate esports team. I saw him at a bunch of events, and we had a follow-up phone call about like what he was looking to do. And you could hear his heart through the phone, as uh, someone just said to me the other day. You know, he's the most genuinely good-hearted person I've ever met. And these players know that. They know they can count on him 24-7 to be taken care of. That's who we want to work with. On the flip side, the players we want to work with are the people who uh, want to win. They're, they mm-hmm. take their job seriously. They're not going to uh, – they have to treat us properly. I'm not going to be sit, – sit, I, I can't tell you how many players treat us like assholes uh, and expect us to bust our butts for them. Mm-hmm. No, you know, go work elsewhere. Go find another agent. Uh, I'm always happy to, to fire a, a shitty client. Uh, but in terms of what we do now, yeah, we, we take uh, 5 to 10% usually – 
and we get their salaries up by quite a bit more than that. And so, like I said, we always pay for ourselves and we get them other incentives that we don't take cuts of. And we, uh, we really help them grow. We help them build their Twitch. We help them build their YouTube and we help them build their Twitter, help them get verified. We get them independent sponsorships. You know, we really do it all with them and, and we, uh, we're going to continue doing that. And we're just going to grow our team as our player roster expands. But it's something I take very seriously in terms of uh, not just set and forget it once a year contract negotiations, you know, where when you sign with us, you're part of our team. And as such, we've been more selective this year on who we'll work with. Uh, now, obviously, the Overwatch League, we, we rep a huge number of them, but that's because we're feeling this space out. And it was really hard when a player came to us for help not to help their whole roster. And that's how it so quickly turned into this whole thing where we're repping this number. Uh, you know, some, one person would come from us from, from whatever, and, and we'd wind up negotiating all six contracts. Mm -hmm. Gotcha, gotcha. And then the, the kind of the follow-up to that is, at, at what point do you think like a, a Tier 2 or uh, maybe like a Contenders level, level player, even lower, like what, at what point should players start looking into representation in their, you know, either Overwatch career or, you know, LCS or, or what have you? If you're being paid to play a game, you should have an agent. Uh, it w will most agents give you the time of day? Probably not. But we, like I said, we just brought on 10 new people uh, and, and our junior agents that are still training and learning the ropes a little bit, that that's the perfect time for you to get a better deal and them to learn the industry a bit better. And it's, it's mutually beneficial and you guys can grow together. Uh, and, and there's other agents out there too who I'm sure will help. Uh, but you know, keep in mind, if you're making $1,000 a month, most agents won't look at you twice. Uh, but, but again, you know, it's something we do commonly. It's something that I think should be done. And I don't care if you're making $1 a month, if you, if you have a contract, you're going to sign, you should have a lawyer read it, uh, every single time. Well, I'm struggling to find where I'm supposed to ask next. Cause we've covered so many questions. <laughs> yeah, other sorry, questions I, I jumped, I like jumped that, around. So. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's a little confusing here, but I do have one question here from chat that I do want to make sure I ask you because I do think it's it's a really uh, good question that we sh probably should have thought of already. Um, <laughs> is there going to be any opportunity in the middle of the season for teams to add, subtract, Trade. make roster moves? Trade. Uh, well, tr trades, I think we can assume will be possible. But um, as far as, you know, these big names that we're about to find out don't have homes that are locked in contracts or whatever for whatever reason is there any point they're going to be unlocked and maybe we can see them jump in in the middle of the the season i mean there are players not in the overwatch league who signed three-year deals six months ago uh it that's what i mean like get a lawyer mm -hmm. uh you know they, they they shouldn't have done that uh there's in terms of our, our players going to be picked up mid-season i this isn't me hiding things i truly don't know i don't know the rules with the uh mm -hmm. where in the season things are going to be allowed or not allowed or maybe it's not until season two uh i don't know that blizzard has that finalized yet uh i don't as much as i work with these players blizzard doesn't tell me anything you know we we don't i don't get like a weekly newsletter from nate or anything uh so i i will probably know at blizzcon when the rest of you know <laughs> all right um, assuming that's when the announcement is that's not <laughs> yeah. That's not any. I, seriously, that's not leaks. I, just, so I, was, I was just. I was so just many buying leaks. a virtual ticket because you said that. No, I'm not gonna do it anymore. Uh, um, all right. So I guess one more thing, and then I'm done here. Looking at what's left on the list, we do have to get to Alicus's question. But uh, is that one oh, seems God. super super important? <laughs> um, but well, and I'm even worst. losing. Oh, Alicus is the worst person in esports. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering. <laughs> The, what, what I was looking to ask you here, though, was can you tell us how you handled any conflicts of interest that may have come up? Let's say you had two players, you know, you, that were both like, I need to be on that Dallas Fuel roster. I love the guys from Envy. That's where I want to be playing. How did you manage, you know, representing and looking out for the best interest for two players that had the exact same goal and the exact same aspiration? That's a super good question. It's one we get commonly. And honestly, it's something that is not that it's not an issue. Uh, we... It rarely happens, and when it happens, it is uh, we get them both a tryout, and it's on them. You know, it's it, mm -hmm. I will sell them and make sure they get a tryout, and I'll make sure they have a chance to prove themselves, and then it's up to them to prove themselves, and uh, that's usually how that's solved. But really, it happens so super rarely you'd be shocked. Uh, even with with representing this amount of players, it's it's uh, the GMs for the most part knew who they wanted for tryouts, and and like I said, we could sneak a couple more of our guys in there. But uh, a lot of times the player would come to us and say, hey, I have an offer. Can you negotiate it for me? Uh, rather than us go get an offer for them. You know what I mean? So it's, sure. it's, uh, that, it, it's, it's literally not been an issue, yeah. But, you know, that's legally, that's why we don't work with teams. 
That's why we don't represent any even like tier seven organizations. Mm -hmm. We only rep players because that would be a conflict of interest if we ever wanted to rep an org and then that pl a player of ours wanted to go to that org. That would be huge. We would have to lose both clients, basically. Right. That makes a lot of sense. Um, another question we had was, you know, how... how... I mean, this, this might even not even, this is a, a multifaceted question that has to deal with a lot of different people. So maybe you don't have a super great answer for it, but, um, you know, how, how do you secure the long-term future of, you know, your clients and your players? Um, obviously the Overwatch League athletes ages skew young and, you know, presumably the, you know, we don't even know what the average length of a career is going to be, but, you know, maybe five or, I don't even know if you could go 10 years in the Overwatch League, but like, how do you like i mean if you go in when you're 18 and you even if you played for 10 years you're 28 when you retire like how how do you you know factor that in I mean, obviously not a lot of people are retiring at 28 um at least not on the salaries that are, are currently there in overwatch league yeah i mean it's it's something we take very seriously we if a player is is young enough we speak to their parents and we make sure their parents understand what's happening and know what's involved uh if a player is uh above a certain age where they that's less of an issue we talk mm -hmm. to them about their future plans uh we, we never shy away from the fact when people's skill might be slipping in other games or things we work in mm -hmm. you know hey let's look at talent positions let's look at desk positions let's look at analyst or coach positions mm -hmm. uh what do you want to do maybe you don't want to be in esports anymore uh but i i think it's perfectly reasonable to think we're going to see 10-year careers if not longer uh you know they i think the burnout that we see in other esports is being dealt with by blizzard here and and uh and, I, and again, a players union would combat that heavily. And hopefully it's uh, we see some long, awesome careers here. Yeah, I mean, I definitely want to see. I mean, that was one of the biggest things for me, uh, you know, buying into esports initially, you know, years ago. It's like, yeah, I really want to get the, you know, the Tavik jersey. But like if, if players are only playing for a couple of years, it's like, I, you know, I feel bad right. for anyone who is a Kenny Lofton fan and had to buy 30 yeah. different MLB <laughs> jerseys for him. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so um, moving uh, on. The last thing we had was a, a question from Reddit, and this was uh, a person who's actually a third year law student, and they wanted to to know how they break into you know the player agency uh, practice for video game uh, uh, for video games and esports. You know what areas of law should they specialize in, um, uh, etc. Uh, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, really, so if, it's the kind of industry where if you if you need a guide, you're not going to be successful. Mm -hmm. And I know that's a really shitty, pompous, terrible answer, but it's the kind of thing where uh, you need to be at every event. You need to be shaking hands. You need to be networking. Mm -hmm. You need to understand. I didn't come into esports knowing anyone. I didn't know any side of this world from video game attorney world. No, no two people cross paths with me. Mm -hmm. uh, I got into esports because I, I liked it because I was at events and I was networking my ass off. And uh, not once has it mattered if I took a trademark class or a contract class. You learn those things by actually doing them. You learn them by self-study. And sure, drafting contracts is super important. But if you want to work in, as an agent instead of a lawyer, it's more important you know people. It's more important you know how to uh, negotiate a deal. So take your dispute resolution classes and things like that. But, uh, you know, it's it's you have to understand that I get that question 600 times a day in emails. <laughs> uh, I, I'm not exaggerating when I say I get 150 resumes a week. So, uh, you know, understand you're against the world there and, and no one's going to hold your hand for it. So if you want it, you have to go out there and figure it out and uh, and and be weary of advice from people above you. They don't want company. <laughs> <laughs> um, so th this is my own personal follow up to that do you need do you need to have like a certain type of like either uh certificate or degree oh or i'm so glad you to... asked that so <laughs> to be you an have agent to be licensed specifically? to be an agent okay you have to be licensed to be an agent if you look at the website you'll see that i am licensed you will see that everyone at evolve talent agency my agency is licensed you will see that most other agencies are not licensed uh, you can go find, a, pick an esports agent or person on Twitter and, and look them up, and you'll see they probably don't have a license. And uh, I really think that as the IRS figures out esports and realizes that most players haven't paid taxes ever and they have everything in a, a huge PayPal account that they shouldn't have, uh, they'll also figure out that these agents are not licensed. I think when the CAs and WMEs and the rest of them come in and really just want to shut down their competition here, mm -hmm. they're just going to report everybody. Uh, it's the first thing they're going to do. 
And uh, you're going to see a lot of the, the bigger name agents around here just disappear overnight. Uh, it's, it's yes. So the answer to your question, yes, you need a license. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. I'm, 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 I'm glad that that is the case. Well, not, not the case that no one is licensed, the, the case that you do need a license to be an agent. <laughs> yeah, right, right. No, absolutely. I mean, they, they're serious about it too. They make you send in uh, the contracts that we send our players. They have to, the state has to okay them. They make sure that uh, we're not taking advantage of our guys. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I mean, if a player doesn't read contracts and then they're signing with us to help have their contracts read, if our contract to work with us was manipulative and abusive, right. that'd be pretty bad. So the state regulates us so we can help regulate the industry, basically. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, and we might as well get it in here from Alicus. Okay, so before we ask the, this, I don't oh. know if this is supposed to be offensive or anything. I don't know the, the history between you two. So if this is I, an offensive I saw, question, I don't. I it's saw not because... from Alicus on the list of questions. I didn't even read it, so I don't remember what he said. <laughs> All it All says, right. okay, go, go for it, Death. Batman or Superman? Oh, I, I don't. I, he's he sends me so much nonsense that probably is an inside joke. I forget. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, yeah, I mean, so I'm I'm a Batman fan. Uh, you know, the, uh, root for the underdog, I, and I didn't hate the movie. The Superman <laughs> versus Batman movie. Did, didn't hate it. All right. Well, I guess we're not publishing this one. We'll just delete this, yeah. scrap it, and pretend it didn't happen. So, so I for, delete the if, you delete for, the if you if you forget the part with Doomsday, like you just shut off the movie before Doomsday enters, it's not that bad a movie. I I mean I I've never actually even seen it, so I can't I can't oh, well, actually talk I I can't actually talk crap about it. I'm one of I'm I'm basically a redditor that just takes the high horse and meme and meme hates it. I I have, I have no idea. I have an Iron Man behind me. Does that count? I'm an Iron Man fan. There you go. Marvel. <laughs> All right, so Marvel the answer is Batman or Superman. He's going with Iron Man. Yeah. I like it. Perfect. Perfect. Only because I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> leaks. Well, that's, that's, I think, a record six leaks now. Um, yeah. But that's all we've got on our side. I think death, right? Did, I, did we miss anything? Yep. Okay, awesome. That's all we've got. Ryan, the floor is yours. Any shout outs or anything that, I mean, anything that we glaringly missed that you want to bring up and, and let the fans know or shout outs or anything? floor is yours no i think you guys were pretty thorough in in what i th i think people want to know right now about the league and as much as we can talk about obviously you know it's not that far away anymore which is mm -hmm. pretty exciting uh i will say that anyone who thinks the league is going to not be successful because viewership is down right now doesn't understand viewership or, or 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 marketing or anything like that i think once this league is about to launch and out there we're going to see a marketing campaign like only we've seen before with like DraftKings and FanDuel where you can't turn on anything without seeing it. <laughs> uh, and I think that that number is going to shoot up. But uh, yeah, just a shout out to all my players and, and hopefully we kick some ass this year and, and uh, let's beat Boston. Even the players <laughs> I rep on Boston. I, I said that before the stream, I think. So I just want to clarify I'm a Jets fan, so I have to hate New England. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I love Huck. I have a player on Boston who I love. We're, uh, we're all good, but secretly, you know, Let's let's go anyway. Secretly but. leaks hate Boston. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Me sure. and Ryan will be like in a Discord channel somewhere rooting against Boston every time they play against anybody. Like I That's will have right. I want a jersey and a hat for every other team in the league. So that oh, who's Boston playing against? That's who I'm repping today. Like that's that's my ultimate end game goal here. Absolutely. Um, so I'm but I'm glad I won't be alone. Absolutely. But at the end of the day, they got Soldier too. So they have one of my clients, they got Soldier on their announcement and uh and Huck's been a friend of mine for a long time, so I'm going to have to eat crow a little bit. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, so I mean, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to go off on too much of a tangent. But you mentioned that like people are complaining that like Overwatch League is going to fail because viewership is down right now. It's like people were saying that bad. So for reference, High Noon Podcast has been covering the Overwatch League East, or the Overwatch esports scene since before Overwatch esports existed. We were playing, <laughs> right. So like when people are like, "Oh man, we're only getting like 20k viewers a stream." It's like, um, we we were back in the day where we were like 30 <laughs> where the two, the two of us were 30% of a of a Gosu Gamers <laughs> yeah. weekly event. I, we were, like I've seen viewership in the hundreds for this game and we, yeah, like, we get more downloads on individual episodes now than people used to like be live yeah. watching the go first couple go to gamers weekly yeah. so i, I and, personally don't and, have any fear oh, as far how as that's concerned people forget <laughs> the old days before launch even when when the game launched it it exploded 
Yeah. I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna skyrocket. I, I mean, I've I've said it before. I think it's gonna be a top tier esport for a very long time, and and it's not going anywhere. Uh, we we obviously wouldn't be investing this much time in it if I thought otherwise. Uh, I think Blizzard understands the spectator problems. They're fixing it. I think Blizzard understands the uh, viewership and marketing problems, and they know how to do that. Uh, World of Warcraft still is popular, so uh, you know I, I wouldn't bet against Bobby Kotek. <laughs> yeah, I mean if if. People think that these gigantic organizations and VC funds are investing, you know, 20 plus million dollars to make it back the next year or in a couple months like that. Those people are just stupid. Um, right. I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly fine saying that. But <laughs> all right. We've already kept we've kept you longer than we said. So we thank you for that. Ryan, again, huge, huge shout outs to you. Huge thanks to you. Where can people find you on the Internet and, and, and elsewhere? So if you Google video game attorney, I pop up. It's uh, Mr. Ryan Morrison on Twitter uh, and on video game attorney on Reddit where I go and yell every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, so again, huge thanks for coming on the show. Um, that's going to be it, guys. Uh, let us know what you thought. I had a blast. This was one of the more fun interviews uh, that I've done, at least. Um, it's one of the better interviews I've been a part of. So thanks for having me, guys. Nice. nice. <laughs> Appreciate and, it. And he's not contractually obligated to say that so that's right <laughs> <laughs> that's me guys so again give uh, uh ryan some love on twitter and all that stuff ryan you have survived the high noon hot seat it's really not not hard to do but you are one of the <laughs> one of the members to do that. uh guys all the links and stuff for everything is on high noon podcast.com so we're not going to go through all that but that's going to be it Again, huge shout outs to Ryan, huge shout outs to everyone who showed up for the live stream, huge shout outs to just Overwatch League in general. We we love everything. <laughs> and that's gonna be it, guys. We'll see you guys. Oh, actually, we're gonna see you guys some point because BlizzCon is gonna throw a wrench into our schedule, but we'll see you guys at some point soon. Bye bye. Oh and Oh yeah, go no, we're not we're not dead yet. What I was gonna say and listen to uh, my podcast Robot Congress, which you two should come on and we talk Ooh. about a lot of esports and behind the scenes stuff. <laughs> awesome. Say 100%. the word, man. We'll be there. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Bye, everyone. Got his boots and he put on his hat. He threw the coin away that same day. It's in his past and he's not looking back. He says, finding mine now guides my way. He's not good, but he sure ain't bad. I'll change